Previously on Reality Roundup. He probably was never really an emotional partner. Right. Her. Like like right now, he says he's he's realized he needs to focus um, real attention and time on his relationships with each of his kids. And you see him doing that and spending the time and putting the effort in. And maybe that's what he wasn't doing with her. Well, do you think... Which is it's which like, can be easy to do when you've been together a long time and you have so many kids, you know, vying for your attention. I'm Steve. And I'm Kelly. And this is Coupled with Chaos. Welcome to Plathville, Season 5, Episode 6, Come What, Come May. Weird. That's from Macbeth. Oh, okay. So, that's my knowledge for the today. I'm done. That was a nice show. Okay. We will see you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think the best thing to talk about here is Kim. Kim having a boyfriend? Yeah, Kim having a boyfriend. And wanting so anxiously to tell the children. Seems really odd Bad to idea. push this. It does. And they pointed out that this is two months after the split. I meant- seems suspect to me. She's a little too excited. And this came up a little too fast. Hmm. And it was somebody she already knew. Knowing that it is Ken Mm -hmm. and that Ken is, let's call it, it's hard to have. I think you would normally think it would be hard to have an adult child friendship. But Mm -hmm. I think the Plath kids are a bit older maybe than most at their age. Uh Uh, You know, he had a job, so he worked with him. Um if you're going to be in relationship some with somebody, don't you think Ken would be off limits? Yes, I would think. And if she pursued him, yeah, then this Which, would. It was the impression she gave. It wasn't the impression by she, not answering. She said it. She said yeah. she wasn't going to answer. So for me, it was That's she was admission. She was the one who pursued it. And she's all coy and mm-hmm. giggly. I yeah, mean, that's why I said it was very suspect for me. Great to be in love. So what do you mean by suspect? Like, I don't think this just came up. You don't think it just came up in the past two months? Two months? No. Ooh, look at you. That's some serious shade you're throwing. That's a lot of excitement for somebody who is... Newly going through such a massive transition. I mean, two months is not very long to decide you want to separate, decide you want to get a divorce, move out from all of your children, Quit have your, your business. own place, close your business, and happen to have a boyfriend you're really excited about after being married for 30 years. And want to introduce to your kids. Yeah. This is a little... Beyond my ability to believe. It was her, I think it was the excitement seemed yes, a bit odd. It was. And I am i don't know, we, we haven't been through this, obviously, at this it age. It was the level of excitement yeah, it was. that I saw like in... You, uh, when you saw me the Kalani first time. Kalani. Oh. With her Dallas mm-hmm. side guy flying him in in the middle of marriage counseling with this way Right. On 90 day. Yeah, her excitement about it. It struck yeah. me. It made me uncomfortable. Me too. But it was nothing that I could really, I think, describe. I mean, if you were really wholeheartedly in your marriage for 30 years, could you be, I don't know. be completely severed from emotional ties from your spouse Enough to be giddy, excited about dating somebody else within two months well, after it, 30 years? So that separation happened before, right? Yes. This is what you're this, saying. This is the problem. That's what I'm saying. I find it – it's surprising to me that Barry wouldn't change if we see this Barry now. Uh-huh. This is really, I guess, shaking him up. Yeah. Here's what got me about Kim. So Kim said when she was describing Ken and her discussions and her relationships and the way they are around each other, she said that that Ken just doesn't listen to her, but he hears her 
and he hears her beyond my words is what she said. Reads between the lines. Yeah, beyond my words. Mm -hmm. Now, when Kim is insulted with Barry, Mm -hmm. when she mentions to Barry the thought of seeing other people and Barry doesn't say anything. Mm -hmm. She doesn't find this really all that odd. She (laughs) doesn't see beyond Barry's silence. Right. When everyone else would. Right. That Barry would be so uncomfortable with this that he really... He can't even speak on it. Right. But you can't see that in Barry. After 30 years. Because when she described it and she said, well, Barry didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. We all knew what that meant. Right. He's devastated. Yes. This is more than he can bear to speak on without breaking down. Mm. She said if Isaac isn't okay with this relationship... Then we'll have to talk about it. But she didn't say who will have to talk about it. She didn't say her and Isaac would have to talk about it. That's the impression I got. What it said to me was she didn't say, well, I can't pursue it if my children don't agree. She's just willing to talk them dull until they give in. Yeah, let's look at what she's done. Her dance duty, which was probably a bad idea anyway. Just in general. Um, In this little short window, she has stopped that. Mm -hmm. She isn't in regular contact so often with the kids. And she's picked up this relationship, which is not only an out-of-town relationship, but an out-of-state relationship. Now, they're at the border. They're at the border. Mm. So it's not like it's a... Is he in Florida? Yeah, he's in Florida. Oh, okay. And they're at the border there, so it's not that far. But. I have no belief whatsoever, so I don't know why she does, that Isaac would be okay with this. It was, so what do you think? This is what – I didn't take really many notes in this, but my notes were this. What do you believe? Because we don't know. What do you think Isaac's impression of this will be? He will be angry, bitter, very upset with his mother and upset with Ken for maintaining their relationship and not mentioning this. I'm not so sure about that because I just watch Isaac and the way he is around these other boys. Yeah. And I watch just how, I don't know, kind of open he is. And maybe maybe it'll be different because it's his mom. Yes, that's what I think. Because mm. they all seem pretty close with dad. Not so much with mom. If you were having like a battle of who's being, who's winning this, if you're doing a uh, Barry versus Kim and mm-hmm. the kids. Oh, he's definitely winning. Barry would be winning this. Not, not that it should be a competition. No, but he's doing this better than she is. Mm. So Which he- is shocking because we thought that he was the problem originally. As far as being so tight rained rules and everything with the kids yeah i'm not sure i understand all of this yeah i'm not sure how these kids come out normal yeah i don't know yeah so the bigger question isn't so much isaac but what about the real judge what about the queen of the morality police department lydia (laughs) because kim seemed to be worried about this yeah that's not gonna go well And I think that Lydia has so much confidence now with her position in the family because she's been taking care of the younger siblings. She's the queen mother. Yeah. (laughs) That I have no doubt that she will speak her mind to her mother and put her in her place. (laughs) I think we've seen a bit of the scene. Lydia and Mariah are together. I think that would be smart by Kim to bring Mariah in on the surface. Because she's a supportive partner. Yeah, I'm not sure it works out that way. Mm -hmm. Just because Barry's done such a job. Right. With all of this. They all, the older kids all have to be thinking how hurtful this must be to him. Mm -hmm. And that's going to naturally lead to resentment. Right. Against her. Why would you choose someone everybody knows? That's not really This okay. would be, you can't help, You this is, this, the excuse would be, you can't help who you fall in love with. 
Except for that doesn't sound like that this is what it was. This sounds like she pursued him. And she implied that that last episode when she shook hands with him was the first time she'd actually met him in person. I wa- So I watched that. I paid really – because we knew. Right. We knew before this episode about Ken. She we, was we telling this it. lady that she just met him so in, I watched, in person for the first time. I watched their greeting, and uh-huh. it was a very, very cold handshake that uh-huh. the two of them had. Yeah. Maybe – so I wanted to read that maybe it was a staged handshake that they really had already been around. I was watching for eye glances, mm-hmm. you know, I, all of that stuff. And I didn't really catch anything that went, aha. I didn't see anything it. in his face, but I did in hers. Mm. I think she found him attractive right away. Thank you for listening. You can listen to the rest of this episode by subscribing to our Coupled with Chaos channel on Apple. By subscribing to our Patreon. Or by subscribing to our Supercast. For $3.99 a month. Where you can hear us talk about reality shows. Real life and more on our podcast. Covering shows airing on TLC, A&E, Bravo, and the WE Network. Just follow the instructions in the show notes. Tell your friends about this podcast. And rate and review us on your favorite podcast player. Follow us at Coupled with Chaos and all the socials. Or contact us directly by email at coupledwithchaos at gmail.com. 